I'd like to spend uh, just a few minutes with you, speaking a little bit about Lent and about, uh, about what it can be for us as a time of preparation for uh, the mysteries of Holy Week and of Easter. Kind of spending a little time focusing upon the three practices that the Church has recommended traditionally over the centuries as, uh, as helpful to our spiritual lives and helpful uh, in our traveling or in our journeying with the Lord Jesus during these 40 days. Traditionally, we call these these three practices, prayer, fasting, and works of charity or almsgiving. And, and these uh, are practices which, which we all um, have heard about and maybe we've, we've practiced it throughout our lives. But, but it's good to spend a little time thinking about why these are such important, simple but very profoundly important uh, practices to help us draw nearer to the Lord Jesus and draw closer to his closeness to us. I'd like to start by just thinking a little bit about fasting because it's probably the one practice during Lent that's most difficult for for us to kind of comprehend as to why it's important or what it means for us. But the fact is that fasting involves any, 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 any time we decide consciously to do without uh, either a, a certain kind of food or a certain kind of activity that we're just very used to. Um, because the fact is that sometimes um, we fall into certain familiar patterns and it kind of has an effect of drowning out some of the deeper things in life. And so we kind of clear away some of the, some of the clutter that can uh, have a an effect of distracting us interiorly from the deeper call uh, that the Lord puts to us. Ultimately, I like to call, I like for us to, to kind of realize that that call from the Lord is the call to hear His goodness and uh, and to put that goodness into practice. So, for example, um, we recognize that time is the greatest gift the Lord God gives to us. Uh, the time we have on this life, the time we have uh, uh, to be able to to live and to and to be of some service to one another we realize that, well, maybe if I decide to fast a little bit from some of my ordinary activities, like maybe I spend a certain amount of time any given week watching television or, or looking through the internet or visiting web pages, all of which are good things in themselves if properly used, but they can sometimes take too much of our time. Um, many good things are good, but not necessarily good if we do them all the time and if we do them in unlimited uh, quantities. And so pull back a little bit and say, okay, the three hours I would ordinarily use watching uh, television uh, in the evening or or, or, or or surfing the web or something, what if I put that away, that activity, and did something else? And then, then we hear a call, at least we could hear a call inside of our own hearts, inside of our own consciences. What what could I do with that time? What would be a, a beneficial thing that I could do with that? And we begin to think. And that interior conversation about makes it possible for us to hear the call of the Lord's goodness, calling us to something deeper, something more humane in terms of our relationships with our with our neighbors, with our families, with our community. So maybe I could use that time um, uh, helping helping um, my children, for example, if we have children, uh, do their homework or going to visit a sick relative or, or someone in a nursing home. Or certainly I could use a little bit of that time to spend a little more time meditating on the scriptures and just praying to the Lord, asking the Lord for the grace uh, to, to, to improve um, the situation that, that we live in our personal lives or in the lives of our communities, praying for an end to violence, praying for our young people. Uh, but we could also use that time and in lots of other generous ways. But the main idea is the generosity that we hear as we kind of say, what could I do that would be a benefit to someone else or to benefit to the wider community? Maybe I can go help you know, coach Little League or, or soccer or something that would help our young people have a good experience of adults who are genuinely interested in their good and not sort of take, threatening to take them down a road that that is maybe has a different agenda than their own good. Fasting then can be something that kind of opens us up to the call of goodness and, and to kind of clarify that call, um, the second great practice that the church recommends during Lent is exactly the practice of prayer. And here I would just say spending a little more time every day meditating on the scriptures. We've got to hear the Lord himself speak to us because he speaks to us of the goodness of his Father. And by every word he speaks, the Lord Jesus, and by every work, work he does, he's showing to us this generous pattern of life, which is ultimately the fulfillment of what it is to be a child of the Father and what it is for us to be to be fully um, dedicated to, to, to what all the gifts that we've received as being human beings. And so we meditate a little bit more on the scriptures. We hear the voice of the Lord. We hear him call us to forgiveness. We hear him call us to patience to acts of charity, to be, to, be, to be attentive to the poor, to those who are suffering, those who are, who are, who are suffering from, from any kind of affliction, be it spiritual or emotional, or people who are maybe just lonely, and we could, we could extend a hand in some way. But there's, there's a, a very clear call that comes from the gospel itself, and that's where we have to spend some more time in prayer. 
it purifies our hearts, it kind of clarifies that call that we hear initially in that, uh, in that deep space in our conscience. And then, and then we kind of spontaneously move into kind of works of charity. To everybody, we all have different gifts, but, but the Lord asks us to use them, and, and we can all hear in our own conscience um, that almsgiving call, that, that call to give, uh, to help the poor, to help those who are suffering. Jesus said very clearly in the Gospel, what serve you do to the least of mine, you do to me. And that's the call that we want to put into practice. And so the three great practices of the church, the Christian church during the, the Lenten season of, of fasting and of prayer and of almsgiving are three practices which ultimately always seek to lead us to a deeper relationship and a more perfect conformity in our own lives to what the Lord Jesus is all about and what his gospel calls the human race to. And the call to the human race begins with a call to you and to me. And then, by the grace of this season, uh, we are better able to kind of hear uh, the, the great mystery uh, announced to us during Holy Week of the Lord's Last Supper, the Lord's Passion, the Lord's Death, and his great generous gift of himself on the cross, but ultimately the great announcement of his resurrection where he generously gives us the path to eternal life. I wish all of this, and I pray for all of this, for all of, for all of you, uh, that we might all deeply live, more deeply live, more intensely live the, the call of the gospel during these Lenten days. The Lord might purify us, strengthen us to be made better, um, better able to participate in the deep mysteries that will be revealed to us Holy Week and Easter. God bless you all and your families, and uh, keep us all in your prayers.